Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Meals with Maria. I'm so happy to have you here. Today I'm making five different crock pot meals. These are all delicious meals that 100% can be made on a budget. I'm making an easy tortellini soup, a dump and go chili that's actually a zero point Weight Watchers recipe, a chickpea curry, hash brown breakfast casserole, and baked apples. All in the crock pot, all with the intentions of bringing the cost down on these meals. These are things that my family loved and I'm so excited to share with you guys. So let's get to the recipes. All right guys, let's make a dump and go tortellini soup. I got this tortellini, man, a few weeks back on like a random order or something and here it is. I gotta use it. So what are we gonna use in this dish? It calls for six cups of vegetable broth, but I am going to use cheddar. No, I'm gonna use bouillon, chicken bouillon with my water. I'm just gonna mix that in and use that instead. And then 28 ounce can of diced fire roasted tomatoes. These are for my garden, so we're using them because we're saving money. If you have them, if you got them, use them, right? And then I have some mixed vegetables that are frozen. I would probably use about a cup of these. And then I also have this can of mixed vegetables. It's like this little tiny can. I don't even know where I got it from, but it's gonna expire soon. So we're gonna toss that in. We can drain it out first. Lots of spices. Just to make it dump and go, you can break all these things out for, you know, fresh vegetables, or you can use fresh basil, parsley, thyme, oregano. In this recipe, I'm just gonna use all dried because we just wanna toss it in. We wanna make it easy for ourselves. This is salt, this is pepper, and that's it. Mix it all together, and we should have a delicious soup. First, I'm just mixing up my chicken bouillon, and the recipe for this is just one teaspoon of bouillon for each cup of water. So six teaspoons and six cups of water. Next, I'm gonna add my cans of tomatoes. These are whole tomatoes from my garden. The original recipe calls for diced tomatoes. So you could either dice them on a cutting board or squeeze them with your hands. I find that doing it this way with the mallet is actually a much cleaner method. They do tend to get everywhere when you are using a knife to dice them or squeezing them with your hands. You'll see in a later recipe, I ended up having to use that method. Then I'm just adding my vegetables, and I do end up adding about two cups of the frozen vegetables versus one, as I said earlier. Just seemed like the right amount. Sometimes you gotta go with your gut. Next, I'm adding one teaspoon each of basil, oregano, thyme, parsley, and salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. The next step is adding your pasta. I'm using tortellini, but you could also use mini raviolis. I've seen those at Aldi for as low as $1.50. Really, any filled pasta will do. I cook the soup on high for four hours, or you could do low for eight. It really is a great budget soup. You can add diced tomatoes, your chicken bouillon, your pasta and canned or frozen vegetables, and you can end up at less than $5 if you were to use that $1.50 pasta. The flavor on this was awesome. I'm often a little bit worried about having Dan try things before I get to season them, and I was not home when this pasta was finished, and he had a bowl and absolutely loved it, so it was a huge win. The next meal is a Weight Watchers Zero Point Chili. There are a ton of beans in this meal. <laughs> You'll see that there are six cans. I did decide to use chopped onions instead of using a whole onion because I wanted it to be a dump and go easy meal to make on the run. But if you wanted to use a regular onion, you may save yourself a little bit of money. These chopped onions were $1.19 and an onion probably runs about 86 cents. So you can save a little bit. I got two cans of black beans from Aldi for 49 cents each and two cans of pinto beans and kidney beans from Walmart, and those are 50 cents each. I got these Hunt's Whole San Marzano tomatoes at the Dollar Tree at one time, and really the recipe calls for diced tomatoes. You can usually get a can like this of 28 ounces for 75 to a dollar, depending on the store that you shop at. 
The recipe also calls for an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, which is honestly like 40 cents, but I didn't have one. So I'm actually using about a tablespoon of tomato paste, some sugar and eight ounces of water. And that will basically make your basic tomato sauce that you would buy in a small can at the grocery store. Then I'm using this container of chili seasoning mix. Honestly, if I were to make this again, I would use two of these packets. It needed a little bit more flavor once everything was mixed together. Then I had that can of corn and some garlic powder. Can of corn runs 49 cents at Aldi and garlic powder is 95 cents for an entire bottle. Do not hesitate to buy one. If you add up all those prices, you should be able to feed about 10 people with this chili for under $7. So I'm just dumping everything in. I put my onions in, I rinsed all of my beans and tossed them in, and because I'm not using diced tomatoes, I do have to break these up with my hands, and I can't use my little masher because otherwise I would mash up all the beans. So probably just the wrong order that I did things in, but it works just fine. Just takes a little bit longer. Had I had diced tomatoes, this really would have been a 100% dump and go meal. Just mixing everything together, I'm gonna add my seasoning packet, one cup of water, a tablespoon of salt, and a tablespoon of garlic powder and tomato paste. And don't forget to add your corn like I did. I added mine way part way through when I realized that I completely forgot to add that can of corn. I cooked it on low for eight hours, but you could do high for four. It turned out great. I just added to add an extra bit of chili seasoning, cumin, and garlic powder. I would just recommend one more chili packet and I think that would do the trick. This was a great meal and it was zero points if you're on Weight Watchers. The next recipe is chickpea curry. I'm just using two cans of chickpeas or garbanzos, whatever you call them, which are 49 cents each, one onion, three cloves of minced garlic, one teaspoon of ginger, cumin, turmeric, and a sprinkle of red pepper flakes, as well as two teaspoons of gram masala. Then I have two sweet potatoes that will be diced and peeled, a teaspoon of honey, and one and a half cups of heavy cream. Just going to saute up my onion and my minced garlic to get started here. And then once the onions and garlic are cooked, the hard part is over. Just add all the rest of the ingredients to the crock pot and cook on low for four or high for eight and you have an amazing chickpea curry. I'm telling you guys, this was the creamiest, most delicious thing. I think those sweet potatoes really do it for me. They give it that sweet flavor, and the heavy cream definitely made it thick. If you don't want to use heavy cream and want to make it a vegan meal or just want to go lighter, you can use coconut milk, and it should turn out pretty good as well. It's recommended in the recipe. I have not personally tried it, but my guess is that it would be quite delicious. Don't be alarmed when you open up your crock pot and it looks like a pile of mush. It tastes so much better than it looks. Looks can be deceiving in this case. You can dress up your curry by adding some cilantro and serving it over rice. We unfortunately didn't have any cilantro, but we did use a squeeze of lime and that made it taste really good. So I definitely recommend both of those things. We did get our kids to try it. It was still a no-go, but we enjoyed it. The next recipe is a breakfast in the crock pot. I've wanted to do one of these for a long time. So I'm just spraying the inside of my crock pot according to the instructions and adding my hash browns. Now I bought a big container of hash browns at Walmart and decided to put every single one of them. I think it was like 22 ounces. Next time I would go with a smaller package. There was a lot of hash browns in this and it was a lot cheaper to get less hash browns. That big package was over $2, and I know that at Aldi I can get it for $1.99. Then I'm adding some peppers and onions that were frozen. Honestly, you could just use fresh peppers and onions, and you might save a little bit, but I really wanted to make this a quick dump-and-go meal. And then I'm also using some already cooked bacon from Walmart. I got this on clearance the other day. It was $2, which is a really good deal. I really don't mind using pre-cooked bacon in a dish like this. The bacon was a nice addition, but you don't have to add it, or if you wanted to, you could use ham. Then I'm just using what I have left over of some mozzarella shredded cheese. Here's the thing about budget meals, just use what you got. I wasn't going to buy a whole thing of cheese, I had some left over, I'm using the mozzarella. And there I just poured over 12 eggs scrambled with about a quarter cup of almond milk, because that's what we had, but you can use regular milk if that's what you have. Cook it on high for four hours, and you have yourself a beautiful breakfast casserole. We were able to eat this for multiple days. 
Tasted really good with a little bit of Malden salt sprinkled on the top. If you don't know what Malden is, I will post that below because it's amazing and it will change your life. It's a finishing salt. But it tasted really, really good, especially with the salt and a little bit of ketchup and just this really hash brownie eggy thing. I put it in some containers so that we could eat it throughout the week and it worked out really well. The final recipe is for baked apples. These turned out so good. I can't even help myself when I'm explaining what we made, but I used five apples, three teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of allspice, a half a cup of instant oats, a half a cup of brown sugar, and four tablespoons of unsalted butter. It's going to start by adding a half a cup of water to our crock pot, and then I'm going to work on coring my apples. If you have an apple corer, that's probably the more efficient way to do this, but I was able to figure out a nice, efficient, and easy way to core these apples with the knife that I had. I also think I'd go with a smaller knife had I had one, but for some reason, I'm just like a butcher knife kind of gal, and that's all I keep around. I don't have a ton of knives. I just have a few really good knives that I like to use. Just putting this kind of pentagon shape into the ends of the apple seemed to work, and I was able to take the cores out pretty easily. Once my apples were cored, I just peeled the tops of them. So you want to go about a quarter inch down, and you really don't want to peel off all of the peel of the apple. And then I place them into the crock pot. Once all my ingredients are mixed together, I'm just using this little cookie scoop to scoop the ingredients into the center of the apples. I'm just trying to fill up my apples to the top, and once they're full, I'm going to actually place a, about a little less than a tablespoon of butter on top of each of the apples. I'm going to cook this on high for two and a half hours, and you will see they turn out so good. And here is our finished product. The apples just break apart and they taste so sweet. I really like this recipe because it doesn't feel like there's like a lot of sugar in each of the apples and they really highlight the true apple flavor. It doesn't take very long to cook and I know that this would taste absolutely amazing with ice cream on the side. This could be a real showstopper at any dinner party and although I did not eat it with ice cream today, I know I will in the future. My son, who is five, absolutely loved these, and he ate two of them within one sitting. It was crazy, and then this morning he asked if we had more. So it was a really good recipe, to say the least. If I were you, I would make it. All right, guys, that is it for today's meals. I hope this will give you all some inspiration for you and your family. 
you can eat well, you can eat when you're in a rush very well, and you can eat when you're on a budget very well. So there's a lot of things that can be done with just a little bit of inspiration. So if you use any of these recipes, I hope you enjoy them. And thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more Crock-Pot videos, I do have a whole Crock-Pot playlist for you that I will put in the description box. So I recommend that you check that out. If you like this video, definitely give it that thumbs up for me. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I am doing Crock-Pot videos like this uh, pretty regularly, as well as a series that I have on my channel called $5 Fridays, which provides $5 meal ideas every single week. I've done lunches, I will do breakfasts, I got all sorts of plans. So lots of things going on. Definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss them. I appreciate you guys so much as always and I'll see you soon. I've been waiting all my life for someone like you, like you. I would watch the days go by, wasting.